Let's go live. Let's go live. Come on in, everyone. Come on in. 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 It just broke my fast. Mm-hmm. Let me know if you can hear me loud and clear. Also, let me know where you are watching from. This is our Tuesday takeover. Our Tuesday takeover, where we cover a variety of reality TV, reality TV news, and pop culture news. Uh, we, I always prepare for Tuesday takeover, and like the night before, I'm like, oh, there's not a lot to talk about. And then all of a sudden, story after story after story after story. And as you know, the Grammys happened on Sunday, along with Real Housewives of Potomac and Married to Medicine. If you missed our recaps yesterday, we had two live shows recapping both reality TV shows. So be sure to check those out. We had some really great conversation on both. But I also was um, were trying to catch up on what happened at the Grammys. Sunday night, I was working. After we did our live watch party, um, I was talking, uh, I was reporting on a lot of the Grammy stories that came out. I really have not even sat down to watch the Grammys chapter and verse from beginning to end. But at this point, I really got the cliff notes. All right, because a lot happened. A lot of records were broken. Congratulations to all of the winners. We'll talk briefly about some of them. Of course, we can't cover all of them. But as you know, every single uh, Tuesday takeover, we always start off with good news. We talk about reality TV, reality TV um, news, and we also talk about whatever is going on in pop culture. And there's a lot going on in pop culture, a lot. Shout out to everyone here in the live chat on YouTube, those of you watching on Facebook, on Twitch, Twitter, behind the scenes here on TikTok. We appreciate you all being here for our Tuesday Takeover. Let's just get into it because there is just so much to cover, so much to talk about. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to share the video if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. Be sure to make you get, make sure you give us a five-star review. And if you're not subscribed to the Kempire Podcast, what are you doing? What are you doing? It's not just our live recaps that are going there. We have also special episodes, like the episode that we did on Nicki Minaj versus Megan Thee Stallion. <laughs> All right, let's get into our Tuesday takeover. Baby, baby, won't you listen to me? I got that flavor. I know you're dying to feed. I ain't no dancer. Just got some hip in my feet Now throw your hands up Ooh, you bring the lighter I got the fuse You make a fire I'll add the fuel Follow my lead, yeah. Just watch the shoes Gotta turn the heat up To get this cool Welcome back to the Campire Channel, your number one source for pop culture news and music, entertainment, reality TV, and so much more. This is our Tuesday Takeover, where you can watch us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, and hear us on the Campire Podcast, Apple Podcasts, and on Spotify. We always start off our Tuesday Takeover with some good news, and I always want to hear what is your good news. Replay crew, be sure to let us know your good news in the comment section, live chat, those of you watching on multiple platforms, let us know what is your good news today. And I'm sure you probably haven't even thought about it, but what is making you feel good today? It doesn't have to be something grand or spectacular. It can be the most smallest, smallest I put in quotes because it's not, it may not be small to you. So let me know what your good news is, is today. It is Black History Month. We haven't forgotten over here. You know, I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> We haven't forgotten, all right? It's Black History Month. I hope this is a month where you take time to reflect on what we've achieved, what has happened in the past that maybe you never knew a black person was behind. So happy Black History Month. L love, 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 love this month, even though it's the shortest month of the year. It's okay. It's all right. We got an extra day this year. <laughs> 
Oh, Boho Brownie says, my hair looks great today. A good hair day is fantastic. I wouldn't know anything about that, but I did shave my head, so the, he the head is looking extra shiny. <laughs> All right, but I also have some more good news. Our DC show, sold out. Sold out, officially. Okay, there's one ticket left. One ticket, literally, one ticket is left for our Washington DC show on February 16th. Will you be the lucky person to get that ticket? <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, but a shout out to Washington, D.C. Can't wait to celebrate Valentine's Day with you guys on February 16th. That's a Friday night. Get your man. Get your, your side. Don't bring your side chick to the your side chick, your side chick to the show. OK. Or your side to the show. <laughs> I mean, bring them. I mean, and reveal them. You know, we will have kitchen table talk. No one will know except us. But we will be judging. <laughs> we will be judging. You bring your side to the show. We will be judging, but it's okay. No one else will know. <laughs> uh, not only that, I am so excited to announce, if you're a member of our YouTube channel, you already found out about this earlier today, but I am excited to announce, Philly, we are coming March 7th. Philly, we are coming March 7th. All right, Kempire After Dark is coming to City Winery, Philadelphia, on March 7th, tickets go on sale this Friday. Mark your calendars. This Friday, we will be going to Philly. It's actually my first time going to Philly. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too far from, from New York City, but first time, fine. It's fine. It's fine. But you guys have been asking relentlessly for us to come to Philly. So Philly, show out. Don't Look, you, you saw what DC did. DC set all kinds of records for the Kempire After Dark tour. Don't, don't embarrass us. <laughs> don't embarrass us, all right? Uh, so be sure to, to get your tickets this Friday. And stay tuned. Next week, we will be announcing significant tour dates to a city coming near you. Okay? So stay tuned for that. And, of course, stay locked. Follow me on all my socials. Twitter, at The Kempire. Instagram, at The Kempire. TikTok, at The Kempire. And, of course, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any notifications on our Kempire After Dark tour dates. So shout out to all of you that have gotten your tickets already. Let me, um, I always forget to turn off my notifications, y'all. Always. And I, I don't really, honestly, I keep everything on silent. So if you text me and I don't get back to you, that's because everything's on silent. And if I don't have my watch on, then I really don't know. <laughs> then I really don't know. All right. Anyways, Tuesday Takeover. Let me see what you guys voted on what show you wanted us to talk about first. Let me see. Oh, The Trust on Netflix. You guys voted in the YouTube live chat. Did you guys watch it? I finished it last night. The trust on Netflix is so good, but I feel like the ending just did not do what I needed it to do. But it was so good. I love this show. Brooke, I loved her as a host. And mind you, she comes from hard news. Not hard news. <laughs> but you know what I mean? I, I loved her as the host of The Trust. So for those that don't know, we recapped The Trust a little bit last week. And I told you, for me, as a psychology major with a psychology degree, someone that loves studying people, and this is part of the reason why I probably, I'm probably i so fascinated with reality TV, is the fact that this show was such a great experiment for studying uh, unconscious bias, studying uh, male versus female, studying greed, just studying trauma. All of that is so, so ingrained in this new reality TV competition show. So the premise behind this is that you have this trust of money that you all can split at the end. You don't have to vote anyone out. But of course, you're tempted throughout this reality series. You're, you're given all these different offers. And this leads to people not trusting each other. Secrets are revealed. All right? And let me tell you something about that damn Lindsay. Oh, I'm so... Okay, spoiler. for If you haven't watched it and you don't like spoilers. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. I'm going to give you a moment to get out the room. I don't mind a spoiler, to be honest with you. I, I did get a little annoyed, though, this week when I found out that, that Dan from The Traders was voted out before I even got to watch the episode. Damn, that person that hit me up about it. 
But it's okay. I, I kind of figured he was going to be voted out. But that's the traitors. We'll get to that in a second. <clears throat> Vicky on Facebook says, we do need a reunion. I said literally that after it ended because I need to know people's reaction to what my girl Tolu did. We will get to Tolu in a second, though. We will get to Tolu in a second. All right? Um, but, yeah. So the premise is we can all make it to the end and we'll split this money, but they're tempted throughout this entire competition. They're all tempted throughout of, uh, the, the competition. All right? And this is the cast. Let me bring up the cast so I can remember everyone. When they voted out Winnie, I felt Tolu's pain. Anyone else? Because they really found a sisterhood. I mean, I really loved it. And the way Winnie came out at the end to, to, to really reveal who Lindsay is, if you watch the series from the beginning, the audience know, knows who Lindsay really is. Because the way she depicted herself to the, the cast versus how she was in her confessionals, I was like, Lindsay is a dark horse in this situation and not in a good way. And But I thought after Winnie exposed her as being a, a liar and someone that has lied to both groups, I thought for sure that they were going to vote out Lindsay, but they didn't. They voted out Winnie, and I, and I was like, damn. Damn, damn, damn. I have to say, though, if we had to compare the people that were really loyal from the beginning, I'm actually surprised at the men. Anyone else? But then I say this. Hear me out. Because as I said to you before, I feel like this is a... A psychological experiment on trauma, race, um, sex, a lot of things. I think because people like Brian, Gasper, and um, Jake, white ma males, are in this world of where everything is given to them. So they, of course, they're going to trust that they can make it to the end and... And, and no one's going to take anything from them. It's a different perspective when you think about it. All right? And then Bryce... Okay, Bryce, we, were, we already talked about Bryce last week. He was voted out. You know, he was already a millionaire at 21. And then he tried to make all kinds of excuses for why he deserves that money. We're like, sir, it's the, the white privilege for me. But I appreciated that vulnerability and sharing that on this show because it, it was a great social experiment. But the fact that Brian Gasper and Jake, all, t all towards the end, all towards the end were, they were very trustworthy. I mean, I, Brian, I gave you the side eye when you try to villainize Winnie and Tolu. I was so shocked by that. Jay, who ended up leaving, the, good for Jay. Jay, you were smart because they were going to get you out of there. She's confronting you, but yet your focus is on the two black women. It's like, oh, they're dangerous. I was like, why are they dangerous? Again, I will say we're watching a reality show. We don't know what exactly transpired, you know, as hour for hour, minute for minute. All right. But the way that Julie was able to go under the radar for so long is another interesting factoid. All right. Julie and Jake hooked up. They, they had a little bit of a love affair. Do we know if they're still together? Again, why we need a reunion for the trust on Netflix. The game of greed. <laughs> I loved it. I want them to do it again. Again, spoiler alert for that having gotten to the end. All right. So Tolu does make it to the end despite she, they were ready to vote her out. They were ready to vote her out. Tolu voted for Lindsay. Lindsay voted for Tolu. However, Gasper, shout out to my, stat, my fellow Staten Island boy. Okay. No, I, I, I liked Gasper. He was sort of like, I don't think I can trust Lindsay. Based on, on what Tolu exposed about Lindsay, we saw a whole other side of Lindsay. And when the, the guys sat down with Lindsay, she was confronting them. She was confronting them. And, I, and, and they were sort of like, whoa, what's happening? What's happening? All right. Um, so Gasper was the vote that got Lindsay kicked out of the house. And I was so happy about that. Only for Tolu at the end, because they every step of the way, they're tempted by the reality TV producers. So Tolu gets an offer. They all get a little offer at the end. Take 25000 Whoever has the highest bid will get, get $25,000. All 
extra out, not extra, but out of the trust. So it's taking money from the rest of the group. Honestly, it was like sweet revenge for Tolu and Winnie. I hope I hope Tolu took Winnie out for dinner or something. <laughs> I'm not expecting Winnie to, I mean, Tolu to give Winnie money at all. But take her out to dinner. That win for that extra $25,000 that she took from the trust was for all of us. It was for Black History Month. <laughs> It was for Black History Month. Uh-uh. It was for Black History Month. Happy Black History Month. <laughs> oh, but I, but I will say this. I was like, don't do it, Tolu. Don't do it. But why should Tolu trust them? Literally, they were ready to kick her out just an episode before. Why would she, why would she trust them? At least now she would at least walk out of this house with $25,000. But... She never admitted it, and I was so happy she didn't admit it. <laughs> I was so happy. I was like, don't tell, don't say nothing. I think they kind of figured it was her who took the $25,000. But based off of history, it would have been Julie. Julie was lying. She was lying until they did that um, circle of trust. And then she revealed all the people she voted out or did not vote out when she told them otherwise. The game is so good. And I can't wait for season two. Netflix is, is top tier now with when it comes to their reality shows. All right. So Tolu got an extra $25,000 from the trust. So the trust, they find out at the end that someone took money. So they, the guys were very disappointed. Woo, woo, woo. Y'all will be fine because remember, poor Jake. Jake didn't get extra money. Brian got an extra $30,000 during one of the earlier episodes. Julie got an extra $15,000. So I was happy for Tolu. Tolu got $25,000. Then they split up the $240-something-thousand dollars, meaning that each person at the end that survived got like $40-something-thousand dollars. So Tolu got $40-something-thousand dollars plus the $25,000. Brian got $30,000 plus the $40-something-thousand dollars as well. Julie, $15,000 extra from an earlier offer plus the $40-something-thousand dollars. Poor Jake didn't get did jake no jake didn't get anything extra all right he was just being extra gasper didn't get anything extra but i have to say both gasper and brian for me probably no jake in a way in a way but the most trustworthy i would have to say was gasper brian if we didn't have that situation with winnie and tolu i probably would say you were the most trustworthy but that made me kind of give you the side eye because i was like why are they um so dangerous I, that made me go like huh Huh. Look, huh. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, Shady Katie says, yeah, Mama Allie. Look, Mama Allie's not here, but she will be taking time stamps later. So shout out to Mama Allie. Mama Allie's always here. So I know when she's not here, you guys feel it. You guys feel it. Shout out to our King's Guards, always holding us down. Shout out to Foxy. Um, I saw Philly John. Philly John, we're going to meet in Philly March 7th. Yay. Yay. All right. All right. Enough of that. So the trust is available on Netflix right now. I loved it. The, the end, the, the end was a little lackluster, but I was happy for Tolu and I was happy for the group because they all walked away with money. I'm glad they didn't get rid of Tolu. For me, Lindsay, as I said to you before, she was a completely different person in that confessional versus what she was giving to the group. And I think that little conversation that she had with the, the guys showed her true nature. She was not trustworthy at all. All right. <laughs> the Trust, now available on Netflix. They're not paying me, but at this point, they should. All right. What was the second most? Okay, 90 Day Fiance. We'll move on to 90 Day Fiance. Guys, you're just joining us. This is our Tuesday Takeover, where we cover a variety of reality TV and, of course, pop culture news. So right now, we're, we're talking a little bit of reality TV. We will get into the Grammys in just a second. All right? Because uh, there's, there's a lot to talk about in regards to the Grammys. But 90 Day Fiance, can we just end it? End it, please. Uh, I'm so over everyone. I'm so over. Um, damn, how did I forget their names already? Rob and, and Sophie in the middle, and I'm so over her, of her, her of her tracks showing. What in the Britney spirit? Sorry, Britney. Not Britney catching stray. Sorry, Britney. I didn't mean that, but I did. Um. So I, I, I'm giving you a reference, okay? So I'm so over all of them. I'm tired of of of. Okay. Anali and Clayton, 
What the hell was he doing? He trying to lose 10 kilos in, in, in a day. He's upset that she was um, with that. If he saw the stripper that she was dancing with on this bus, he would not be concerned. <laughs> Y'all remember the stripper from last week, but he had a real jealous fit. So she gets really emotional and she starts packing her bags. Of course, it's a larger conversation that that's happening here. His jealousy. But I was sort of like, y'all know, I feel like the producers at a certain point during the season are like, OK, we're going to create some drama to make it seem like you guys are not going to go down, walk down the aisle. It's coming across so pre-produced and unbelievable. All right. So Clayton and Nolly, they have their little fight, but then they get over it. They get over it. They're going to get married, whatever. And he's going to still live with his mama who lives in the closet. <laughs> Rob and Sophie. Oh, my gosh. So, the, as you know, the last time uh, we talked about this couple, they were fighting. And mostly fighting because her mom is in town. And <laughs> this couple, if I really told you guys what I really think about this whole situation, that's kitchen table talk, though. She's too young to be getting married. She still hasn't experimented with women. She believes that she's bisexual. And she hasn't expect experimented with women. And... He seems open to it, but he's still stuck on his insecurities of, you know, the way that he's living. He's not able to provide because Sophie grew up a certain type of way. Sophie, for you to have grown up a certain type of way, you think that those tracks would not be showing. I don't get class and elegance and money from Sophie, but, you know, look, not everybody. Money can't buy you class. <laughs> money can't buy you class. Oh, anyways. Auntie says, um, allegedly, uh, Rob has money. I did briefly talk about that last week. I did briefly talk about that last week. Even if he, again, money can't buy you class, just because he might come from money doesn't mean he actually has money or has like a level of, you know, coof about himself, you know, with the, the, the bathroom across, across from the apartment. Um, but I, I don't even care about their arguments. I feel like he's emotionally immature. She's literally 23 years old, so she's not a mature. So I don't I don't care about anyone on this cast. I especially don't care about Jasmine and Gino. They they went um wedding dress shopping. I will give Jasmine that she was a beautiful bride. They were trying on the, these different outfits and he he gave her a budget of $1000. Where is he getting this money from? Mind you, at the top of the season, he quit his job. Okay? Gino quit his job. So what the hell, where is he getting this money from? But she tried on all the dresses that he can't afford. The $3,000 one, a $2,000 one. They they settled on the $2,000 one. So they went double his actual budget. I don't care. I know you're probably tired of hearing that every single Tuesday takeover. But I'm hoping every week that it will change. <laughs> I, no. Okay, let's talk about the witch, Ashley. So Ashley's concerned because, you know, she's from upstate New York, but she went to Florida with her beau. And they're going to get married, but there's hurricane warnings because it's hurricane season. But Ashley, I don't think Ashley's that bright. So I'm not surprised she went to Florida during the height of hurricane season. And now a hurricane is threatening her, her wedding. And you know when she starts crying, literally at the top of the season, we were like, why is Ashley crying so incessantly and driving? Pull over pull over so of course we're gonna get that <laughs> moment from ashley but i told you i feel like ashley the witch she's a witch she's really a witch um is a great fit for tlc like to me she's like classic tlc just her personality but at the same time i don't care i don't care about her wedding they did call his mama because, you know, he's missing his children and his mom and his family because they can't be be there for his wedding. So they call and they have a conversation with the mama and they're all crying. And I'm like this watching it. <laughs> I'm, gonna be, I'm just making the, like no expression. Like, I think normally if this season wasn't dragged out, I probably would feel a little bit more. But I, I'd say I was like, can we just get to the wedding? You know what? I will say this. I was whose wedding whose wedding did I did I like? No, no, no. Where is oh Sam and Citra. So Sam converted to, to Islam and they had 
their traditional wedding there. They're going to have another wedding. That's what we saw for the preview. I still don't believe this relationship, at least on Citra's side. I don't. I think that he genuinely, um, I don't know what he genuinely is. I don't know what he's gotten himself into because I don't feel like he's done enough homework on him actually switching and converting to 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 Islam. I don't think that he knows what he's signed up for. I don't think he's done any sort of homework on it at all. I think he's doing it because he wants to marry Citra. I think he's doing it because he wants to sleep with Citra. Because that's all he talks about. Oh, when we get married, then we can finally, you know, hanky panky. Okay. This is this the worst season of 90 Day Fiance? It might be one of the top two. This is not a great season. And I think it's partially because a lot of these stories are not believable. I believe Ashley and her bo and her boo. I believe um Rob and Sophia No, I don't. I don't. I believe they're doing this for to be uh for money and to be reality TV stars. I don't believe that they're I believe that they're in a relationship, but I don't believe Did it get married? Oh gosh. They should not get married. They should not get married. I think he will cheat on her. I think she will cheat on him. <laughs> Look. Danny says the worst. Okay, so it's not just me. Let's move on. Let's move on to 90 Day the Single Life because that's another terrible season. <laughs> Thank you so much, Melanated, on uh, TikTok. 90 Day the Single Life. I'm only watching 90 Day the Single Life for Tyree. And we didn't even get Tyree this week. <laughs> okay. We are still dealing with Natalie. I will say this. We got to see Michael. You know, Nat, she's still married to Michael. Why haven't they gotten a divorce? Maybe by now they've divorced, but I can't believe that she's she has been involved with Michael for like seven years. Natalie's mother loves Michael. That's why she can't get into Josh. But I don't think that Josh really likes Natalie like that. I think maybe sexually. I think maybe for reality TV sake. Again, I said he can't possibly that be that that successful in Hollywood doing reality television. Well, she FaceTimes with Natalie FaceTimes with Michael and Natalie's mom who loves her some Michael. I for me, that was like the best, best scene. It was such a sweet moment because to me, I felt like it was genuine. She's just like, oh, Michael, I would love to see you. We should do lunch. Michael hesitates for a minute and he's like, yes, let's do lunch. So I wonder if Michael makes another appearance during uh, 90 Day The Single Life this season and with lunch with um, Natalie's mom. She loves her some Michael. And Natalie and Michael seem to be in a good place. Again, they're still married, but why? I don't understand why they're still married. Especially because if you're amicable and you're not being together, unless maybe there's still something. But Natalie wants to go to Hollywood. Her mom wants to have her to have babies and, and give her grandchildren. But Natalie wants to be a star. You know, last week she did a whole monologue in Russian to Josh's friend that's a producer. Natalie, wrap it up. <laughs> First off, there's her age. I'm just being real when it comes to Hollywood and how they treat women of a particular age. But there's also the reality TV aspect. A lot of people in Hollywood do not allow a lot of people they gatekeep when it comes to reality tv stars that's why reality tv stars have such a hard time transferring you know crossing over to being actors and singers and rappers it's not impossible but natalie i mean she was that monologue was good i didn't understand a word she said last week but that monologue was good her her facial expressions all right um who else did I, who else did I, John, I know every week I say, John, I'm not interested, but John, truly, I am not interested in your storyline. I don't know what it is. He's dating this woman that lives in another state. She has a kid. Apparently he, he's, he wants to move forward and be, be more serious, but I just don't give a damn. <laughs> I don't know why. And I liked him when he was with his brother on the reality show. But, I, you know, certain people are just better as side characters, not main characters. 
Good for you. Woo, 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 John. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, Tyree we will, will be back next week. He gets a date. He has his first date. This woman that he has a first date with, I feel like they paid her to do this. That That's not who I see Tyree ending up with. Tyree needs somebody that's probably a little bit more his speed. And when I say his speed, like intellectually. I feel like there's something going on with Tyree intellectually. I feel like he's a little stunted. I'm just being honest. <laughs> look, look, look. I'm just being honest. He's a little... <laughs> Tyree's a little stunted. All right? Exactly, Auntie. I don't mind um, John on Pillow Talk, but I don't need John... I don't need to know anything else about John in his sex life or his dating life. I could care less. But we shall see a Tyree next week in regards to his date and things like that. Let's talk about Veronica. What's is, does Tom have like a muscle issue? Because Tom, uh, not Tom, Tim, always feels like like tight. They were they're playing pickleball. They're playing pickleball. Um, <laughs> why, Jam <laughs> Jamal? Were you wearing foundation during pickleball? No, no shade, no shade. Look, nothing wrong with it. I just feel like, and I get it, you're filming a reality show, but you're also about to play pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> so you remember a couple of weeks ago, we had the fight between Tim and Jamal. And I told you, I don't know if I 100% believe the relationship between Veronica and Jamal. I feel, or at least poor Veronica. If Veronica, Veronica probably believes the relationship, but Jamal is just here for television. But he's young, so I'm not surprised. And I don't... Tim is dating this, first of all, she's beautiful, the woman that he's dating. And he's moving so slow. He's moving so slow. I'm looking at Tim like, what is wrong? With, but remember, if you watch Tim's original um, season of 90 Day Fiance, it was the same thing with the, the woman he was dating then. Like, he was taking his very sweet time before being intimate with her. And it's sort of like, yeah, look. What is wrong? Like, he's a, I don't know. I can never explain. I know some people think that Tim is gay. Even if he was gay, I feel like it would be the same thing. I don't know what is going on with Tim and his interactions with women or relationships. Do you think that he still wants to be with Veronica? They were together for a long time before they broke up, and now they're just friends. I do believe that their friendship has hindered both of them in their relationships. Honestly, that's probably like the only storyline that I'm semi-interested in outside of Tyree of 90 Day the Single Life. So they go to play pickleball. As you know, there's tensions between Tim and Jamal. Ew. <laughs> I need that as a sound bite. Ew. <sighs> the end says, How is Tim getting these women? TV. <laughs> Look, TV. Poor Tim, though. Like, I, I wonder if physically something's wrong with Tim because he can barely, like, it's, like, stiff. Like, he can barely move. I'm like, how are you playing pickleball? And the way that he was talking to his date about, we, look, we got to win. Huh? And the way that he was criticizing her during during some of the, the, the hits. Why is pickleball such a thing? Why can't we just play tennis? I'd much rather play tennis than pickleball. But I have to say, pickleball is probably better for, for Tim because the way that he, he seems so stiff. But maybe physically something's going on with Tim. He just seems so stiff. Both stiff in physical physicality, but also stiff in his personality. All oh, that rhymes. <laughs> 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 that rhymes. He still has not kissed this woman? This is what, their third date? All right. All right. Uh, Natalie says, I like Tim and Veronica. I like Tim and Veronica. Like I said, that's probably the only storyline from 90 Day to Single Life besides Tyree that I'm like, I'm still interested. I don't know if I believe everything 100%, especially Jamal and Veronica. Ew. Exactly. Shonda says, I don't get the hype around pickleball. It's like a thing now. Everyone's doing pickleball. Go play tennis. <laughs> but maybe um, pickleball is better on the joints because tennis can, you can really like pull something playing tennis. But I'd much rather play tennis. Why are we playing pickleball? Corny. Anyway, sorry. Moving on. 
let's move on from 90 Day. Let's move on. Let's move on into some pop culture news, guys. Welcome back to Tuesday Takeover. This is where we cover a variety of reality TV, reality TV news, and pop culture news. Don't forget, our sponsor for today's live show is our friends over at Rose Forever. You can see some roses. It's Valentine's Day right around the corner. Literally, Valentine's Day is le- uh, like about a week away at this point. It's about a week away at this point. You can still have time, especially if you live within the United States. But even if you live internationally, you can probably still get some of your roses that will last you up to a year. They smell delightful. These are still beautiful. Look at the, look at the, the roses behind me. For those that are listening, watch us on YouTube. You can see the roses there. Or you can head on over to roseforever.com and use the discount code KEMPIRE40 for $40 off. Plus, you can use the discount code influencer for free worldwide shipping free worldwide shipping more information will be available in the description of the video or the episode if you're listening to this all right shout out to our friends over at rose forever for sponsoring today's live show okay moving on okay can i give you guys a follow-up on justin timberlake I am so mad at Justin. I don't know why he did this. So last week we told you that Britney Spears had posted and said, I forgive Justin. She says, I want to apologize for some of the things I wrote about in my book. If I offended any of the people I genuinely care about, I am deeply sorry. I also wanted to say I'm in love with Justin Timberlake's new song, Selfish. Because a lot of the Britney fans were trying to cancel out his song, Selfish, by really playing and streaming her song, Selfish. So she posted that beautiful thing. Then Justin, as you know, he's on the promo trail for his new album that's coming out in March. Why am I promoting him? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Justin. So he's here in New York. He had a, a free live show. And homeboy, let me play the audio for you guys. Let me play the audio for you because this is what Justin said at, a re- at the New York live show that he had here. I was like, really, Justin? Why are you doing this? Really? Really, Justin? Really? So Justin decided to use that opportunity, and I'm sure he saw Britney's post. I'm sure he saw Britney's post where she she said, I love the song, and she was trying to help him out. And he said, I I want to take this time, right before he went into the song, Don't Cry Me a River, (laughs) which you know is allegedly about Britney Spears cheating on him. I was like, wow, Of just when people are ready to at least maybe listen to your album, maybe move on and move forward, especially if Britney can move forward, the, the Britney fans can move forward. I was like, why would you do that? Shonda says he thought he ate that. I was like, this man is a fool. Like, you just tanked your own album. But that goes back to that whole cockiness, that whole privilege thing. He feels like he probably felt so empowered because that audience probably felt got them all hyped up and they were all it was sold out and everybody was there for Justin. Yay, Justin! Justin! He could have just kept quiet and sang that damn song. Just when we were we were giving you a little like we were like okay maybe we can invite Justin to drop off some ice at the cookout. You're not invited to the cookout. (laughs) Not anymore. Because now I'm taking personal that you are taking back your apology to Janet as well. So just when we thought he could, you know, bring over some ice, (laughs) just drop it off. Just drop it off. No, don't even come. Don't even turn the corner. (laughs) All right. Don't even just keep on driving. You're not welcome here. Sidebar. Ludacris recently told a story on, I think it's Drink Champs. And he had just won a Grammy. And apparently... He was excited backstage and there there were a bunch of artists backstage and they were only separated by like a curtain. And Justin Timberlake basically went off on him and was just like, well, not everyone won an effing Grammy. Shut the F up. (laughs) But the way he, way Ludacris told it, it sounded like Justin may have been trying to be funny. I don't know if he was dead serious. But based off of what I'm seeing from Justin's behavior, I think he was dead serious. I think Justin is terrible behind the scenes, allegedly. I don't know. But 
really, Justin, you take this opportunity just when people were sort of saying, okay, maybe we can be open to Justin again. I do like the song Selfish. I'm not going to lie. I do like the song. I've said it before. I like the song and I like the song Sanctified. But I just don't like Justin Timberlake. Okay, I don't I don't feel like um, Britney didn't have to post and say anything about liking his song or trying to take the heat off him. She did not have to do that, but she did. But then she went on social media after she, she, she heard, she's like, I'm going to paraphrase this. She said, I heard somebody was talking about me in these streets <laughs> and then said that, oh, you know, are you going to go home and cry to your mama again? <laughs> yes, Brittany. Get them together, Brittany. <laughs> so it's oh, not for shizzle. Remember from the book that, you know, I'm sure he, he got a lot of heat after Brittany's book came out. A lot of heat, especially when she told that black scent um, story for shizzle my nizzle. That, that, that story. Oh, Justin. Just because you're friends with black people in, in Timbaland doesn't mean that y you can get away with anything. Okay. I'm so glad I didn't go to that concert because I probably would have walked out. That's ridiculous. Anyways, <laughs> guys, if you're just joining us, we're talking a little bit of pop culture for our Tuesday takeover. Julie, thank you so much for the super chat. Julie says, <clears throat> oops, I meant the trust. Great show. <laughs> thank you so much, um, Julie. Uh, Joe, thank you so much for the super chat. Joe says, should I get uh, the last ticks for NECA's mama? You know what, Joe? No. <laughs> Look, no, Joe is, Joe is shady enough to do something like that. Joe, leave that ticket for someone that really wants to go. Okay. Tiara, thank you so much for the super chat. Tiara says, hey, Kempire, I'm from Cleveland, but too pumped to come to the March 7th show because that's my B-Day. Happy early birthday. <laughs> yes. Is Cleveland, Ohio close to Philly? I don't know geography like that. I have to look at a map. <laughs> but regardless, all are welcome. All are welcome. All right. Um, say, Sonny. Thank you so much for the super chat. Sonny says, Justin needs Brit and her fans to stay relevant. That's why I'm like, why would you do that? Like, to me, that wasn't a smart move. I'm sure his publicists were like, oh, my God. But I'm sure Justin has been feeling himself. All right. Um, Asha, thank you so much for the super chat. Asha says, Kempire, that video was taken out of context. He made it. Wait, he made it while performing Dead and Gone, not Cry Me a River. Just, justice for Justin, Town Hall for JT. No, no Town Hall for JT. Regardless, even, even, if, even if it wasn't before Cry Me a River, even that's, that, that's what the report said, even if it was, why would you say something like that? Especially of because it could be taken out of context. Just because it could be taken out of context. Free Britney. I mean, she's free, but you know what I'm saying. But thank you, Asha. No, no, look, no town hall for Justin. Justin, you, you're still not welcome to the cookout, and you can't bring ice. We'll be good. I'll bring the ice. All right. <laughs> and for those that are asking for more uh, Kempire After Dark tour dates, significant dates will be announced next week. We did just announce today, if you're just joining us, we just announced that I will be in Philadelphia on March 7th. Tickets will go on sale this Friday, this Friday. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for that. All right. Um, oh, <laughs> Janine says he's used to not apologizing. Hashtag Janet. Oh, shout out to Usher. Can we just say shout out to Sidebar before we get to Usher? Um, did you guys hear about Drake allegedly um, deep pick, not deep pick, deep video being leaked online? I saw the video. Impressive. <laughs> oh it, look, impressive. I just don't understand, especially someone of Drake's celebrity. You are sitting there at home in bed filming yourself doing that? Really? Really? And I look, look I get it. I, people have asked me to send pics like that before. And I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. Even before I was out here on the YouTube streets, I was like, I'm not doing that. Don't stop asking. <laughs> but Drake, million dollar Drake, hugely famous Drake is sitting there. First of all, why is that video so damn grainy? <laughs> Shonda, Shonda says, I saw it. Yes, I saw it and not mad at it. I'm not mad at it at all. I'm mad at the quality of the, the actual footage. 
You really can't tell if it's Drake or not. And look, it could be someone else. But I, here's the thing. D Drake, you don't have to deny it because if it's not you, whoever it is, it's very impressive. <laughs> Sharika says men do it all the time. K says uh, leaked for sure. I ain't mad though. <laughs> you know who was more impressive? Jesse Williams. Oh, yes. Come on, Jesse. You know, Dr. Avery from Grey's Anatomy, we did a whole report on it. I was tempted to do a report on Drake, but we don't know if it was Drake or not. We knew it was Jesse. Hey, Jesse. <laughs> uh, uh, Joe says it could be Juan. Juan Dixon? No. I mean, I'm sure Juan. No, well, you never know. You never know. Um, thank you so much. Oh, you know what, Joe? Thank you for the super chat. Joe says, please share Drake's video for my research purposes. Really? <laughs> Go to Twitter, y'all. Y'all can see it on Twitter. Unless they haven't, you know, wiped it already from Twitter. Not wiped it. Lord have mercy. Um, but that video footage was, like, terrible. Like, in this day and age of, like, our cameras, people are using cameras f for streaming and making, like, high-quality videos. That video looks recent. I mean, it was impressive, but like I said, Jesse's was better. <laughs> Jesse's was better. I'm going to talk more about it on my podcast because I feel like I can't get into it here. Or Campfire After Dark. Oh, I need to write that down. It might not be even, even matter when it comes, um, um, you know, February 16th. But who never know. If it comes to mind, I'll mention it during our DC show. Because then I can really talk about it and make your boyfriends and husbands very uncomfortable. <laughs> make them very uncomfortable yes we're going to talk about all of it all right that's why it's called campfire after dark all right jasmine says flip phone quality yeah maybe worse than that nokia quality anyways moving along let me let me move on so i just wanted to briefly talk about that all right um but okay elephant brain's working i wanted to talk about usher usher so as you know usher we will be watching, of course, the Super Bowl just for Usher. Well, Usher is now the face of Skims. So the photos came out with Usher in Skims. Okay, Usher. Usher is how old? How old is Usher? You guys remind me how old Usher is. Grown. He's been around a very long time. But Usher looks great. And I love this ad. Like, he, he, his body looks great, but I love the color. Here's the thing with Skims. You know Skims is owned by Kim Kardashian. I just hate the fact when you have a brand like this and you can never get the actual product. Has anyone actually gotten the product? I hate when they launch something like this, they release it, and then it's sold out for the rest until you launch a new thing. That's like um, Ivy Park. So I'm like, what's the point? <laughs> what's the point? I get it. Limited edition. But Usher looks great. That's the only reason why I'm talking about Skims. All right. Usher looks great. Look at him. Body is body. All right. So he's 40-something. 45, 42. <laughs> Look, Brit says old enough. <laughs> That's all that matters to us, right? He also announced that he's going on tour. He has a new album coming out. His song Ruin, I like it. I like his new album. What well, his new song. But Usher looks great. Him squeezing on the peach. I mean, Usher looks great, but you can we Okay, this is another Ken Bar After Dark moment. <sighs> Usher looks great. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not touching it. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Because uh, now it's awkward. Um, <laughs> Rose forever. Um, he looks great, though. I actually like this color uh, in Skims. It's like a burgundy. You know, I like it. Anyways, moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Since we're talking about music, can we talk a little bit about the Grammys? So the Grammys happened on Sunday, hence why maybe the ratings for some of your favorite shows will be pretty low because a lot of people were talking about the Grammys. I have to say, give a personal shout out to Victoria Monet because some of you might not know this. Victoria Monet used to be a part of a girl group, all right? And I interviewed that girl group years ago. They, it was a girl group signed to Dark Child, uh, Rodney Jerkins. And I did an interview along with Rodney years ago, because you know I've been doing this for a very long time. Some of you are new to me. But you can even hear the interview on Kempire Radio on that YouTube channel. Head on over there. 
So Mc Victoria Monet won like three Grammys, three Grammys on, on Sunday. And her fine boyfriend, right? That's her boyfriend, right? Not her husband yet. First sidebar, Victoria Monet, May 1st, Taurus. Yes, Tauruses are winning. Hey, 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 yes. So all of this happened. Remember during the VMAs, it came out that Victoria Monet's team wanted her to perform at the VMAs, but they said, not yet. It's not your time yet. Isn't that what the whole situation of the VMAs is? Finding some amazing talent and being the first to launch and, and say, like, look, yes. And Victoria Monet, I'm sure you've seen the clips on TikTok and things like that. She's a phenomenal live performer. All right? I say all that to say. Look, I say all that to say. Rewinding back. So I interviewed Victoria years ago when she was a part of this girl group. All right? And since then, she had been doing work behind the scenes, writing for artists like Ariana Grande, who's like her best friend. Uh, she's written for Brandy. She's written for a bunch T.I., Chris Brown, so many different artists. She was behind the scenes writing for her speech when she won Best New Artist at the Grammys, talked about how she sort of felt like this industry was the soil and she was, you know, growing beneath the soil for a very long time. And, and she says now she feels as if she's budding above ground. You, you tell she's a damn songwriter the way she said that. All right. Congratulations to Victoria Monet on all of your Grammys. You deserve all of it. You've worked hard. And again, I talked about this during my New York City show. It, here's the thing. You know, some people will have instant success. You know, people are so used to, you know, going viral on social media. And then all of a sudden this person's famous. When it's your time, it's your time. Sometimes it's a month. Sometimes it's a year. Sometimes it's 10 years. Sometimes it's 15 years. I've been doing this a long time and I'm still sprout. Look, I'm just still I'm just coming through the sprout the, 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 through the soil. So I loved her speech. Congratulations to Victoria Monet. And I love that she brought her, her boot thing and her baby to the Grammys. I love how he's been supporting her behind the scenes and just always uplifting her on social media. Love it. Love it. Love it. They're a beautiful couple with a beautiful baby. OK. So congratulations to Victoria Monet. Congratulations to SZA. And Babyface. I didn't realize Babyface had um, credit on my one of my favorite songs from her album, Snooze. All right? She didn't win Album of the Year, even though that was one of my favorite albums. Taylor Swift won. And then Taylor Swift was almost, like, canceled. <laughs> she was almost canceled because she went up on stage and didn't acknowledge Celine Dion. Because Celine Dion, as you know, she's been dealing with um, some health issues. So people were surprised to see her at at the Grammys, but she was there. But immediately, people were so upset with Taylor for not acknowledging Celine when she went up there. But I, I I, didn't jump to the conclusion that she was just being rude to Celine Dion. I just felt like she was so caught up in the moment, even though this is her fourth album of the, of the year win. I just took it that she was so caught up in the moment. I, I, I didn't see any disrespect, but Taylor's PR team were, they said, Celine Dion, uh, uh, not Celine Dion, um, Olivia Pope, get on it. Immediately, this photo was revealed. Immediately, that they they hug backstage. But look at Celine Dion. Celine Dion doesn't even look like she wants that hug. We're body language experts, all right? Um, I'm looking at Celine Dion. She's sort of looking at the camera. Taylor, I mean, Taylor has been accused of being very phony. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm giving Taylor grace. I feel like Taylor was caught up in the moment. I don't think she was initially trying to be disrespectful to Celine Dion, who can sing all of them under a rug. Um, but it was so great seeing Celine Dion. She was styled by the uh, iconic luxury law. As you know, Lu uh, law does all the girls. Um, but he's collaborated with Celine many times over the years. And they came together for this um, beautiful look that she had at the Grammys. So nice to see Celine Dion. Speaking of the Grammys, yes, Miley Cyrus winning her first Grammy how in the hell is this Miley Cyrus's first Grammy? And she, of course, said this is so iconic. MC with MC. Of course, Mariah Carey. Mariah looked amazing. I also loved Miley Cyrus's speech as well. She was talking about a, butterf a butterfly um, analogy. Go, go, I, I can't uh, even give it justice. If you miss Miley Cyrus's speech, I thought it was beautiful. 
And to me, it was like the theme of the night, literally what Victoria Monet said, talking about waiting for her moment, waiting for her time. Sometimes when you let things go, it, it will happen. Sometimes you, you, are, you are the roadblock in front of yourself. So that's what I got from Miley's speech. I just can't believe that this was Miley's first Grammy. Joni Mitchell performed at the Grammys for the first time. All right. Brandy hasn't performed at the Grammys since 1997. She joined Burner Boy because, you know, she sampled on one of his hit songs. Her song, Sitting on Top of the, Wor uh, Sitting on Top of the World. Um, so she performed at the Grammys. She looked great. Who was your favorite performance from the Grammys? My favorite performance has to be Fantasia. Come on, Fantasia. I've seen Fantasia live. Fantasia is one of the best live performers I have ever seen. And you know there were rumors that Beyonce was going to do this Tina Turner tribute. But I'm thinking because Oprah was asked, because Oprah was also there. Oprah looked great too. Oprah, the Ozempic is Ozempicking. But it looks she looks great. I don't know if it's Ozempic. It's some sort of weight loss drug. There are multiple. All right. Oprah looks great. Everybody there that, that's on something. Look, <laughs> look, that's on something. They all look fantastic. But let me tell you, the way that Fantasia, let me just take you on a story. So Fantasia auditioned on American Idol with a Tina Turner song, with this Tina Turner song. So for her to come and perform, she's having an amazing year. Fashion, her fashion is fashioning. She was in The Color Purple. She's been nominated for all the awards except the Oscar. Ooh, it's a fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. But I was so happy to see her back on stage performing because Fantasia, acting, wonderful. But she is a great vocalist and live performer. Her performance, I did not even think of Fantasia for this performance. I'm so glad that someone else did, though. So Oprah introduced the performance. There's a video footage. I can't share here because, you know, copyright. But go to Fantasia or Oprah's Instagram account. You see behind the, uh, behind the scenes of the rehearsals for this. Beautiful. Uh, Oprah got emotional seeing Fantasia uh, rehearse this. Fantasia, she will take you, take you there emotionally. And she brings it even during rehearsals. So her performance was fantastic. She got into the audience. She danced with Dua Lipa. She went up to Beyonce. Beyonce looked awkward. She's like, I don't know if I want to. <laughs> she, she didn't come here for that. She didn't come here for that. She came to just to watch and spectate. Okay. Um, sidebar, there was a line to greet and take a picture with, <laughs> with Beyonce at the Grammys. But I heard after Jay-Z accepted his award, they were they left. <laughs> Blue Ivy, Beyonce, and Jay-Z left the situation. Speaking of Jay-Z, so Jay-Z said this at the uh, Grammy Awards, accepting the Dr. Dre, um, I was going to say Image Award, but that's not what it's called, <laughs> Impact Award. I don't want to embarrass this young lady, but she has more Grammys than everyone and never won album in a year. So even by your own metrics, that doesn't work. Think about that. The most Grammys, never won album of the year. That doesn't work. So some people have speculated that Jay-Z took, very much like Kanye did at the MTV Music Awards years ago, took this moment away from, from uh, Taylor this time around. Here's the thing. Do I think Beyonce should have won album of the year multiple times? I do. I do. But I feel like at this point, who cares? And the fact that Jay-Z even made it an issue, I was like, y'all are so above this at this point. You're at the top of your game. She's at the top of her game. You both have the most nominations for Grammys. Uh, uh, Beyonce has the most Grammys of anyone. Who cares? I mean, I guess maybe as an artist, you would feel a little bit differently. All right, let's see what her daddy had to say about this and why she was overlooked. Beyonce were overlooked um, time after time after time for everything. I get it. But she's won 32 and really, as you say, 36 awards. So it's not that she's been overlooked. So why do you think that this one category is where they're disrespecting her? People don't know the process. Your record label 
can only appoint one person in a category. So that means her record label, I'm gonna call you out, Columbia Records. Her record label has never put, really put her in that category for consideration. But she's been nominated. That, and I guess that's the, the problem, Matthew, is that people feel like they nominate her for Album of the Year, but then they give it to someone who, in the eyes of a lot of fans, had an inferior album. And that's the question is, like, why are they singling her out in that category? Well, again, when you have, uh, going back to Adele, and being on, say, on the same record label, the record label can only support one of those artists. Why do you think that the label, which has made a fortune off Beyonce, why would they choose Adele over, over your daughter? Well, there's a lot of reasons. I mean, there's a financial reason. Maybe Adele sold more records um, worldwide. I don't know these answers, but these are some of the thought processes that they go through. Maybe uh, you say, you know, Beyonce has her success. Here's an opportunity to push Adele, so let's push her. So this isn't so much the Grammys as it is the label, according to you. It's a combination of all, but it starts with the label. Again, guys. Okay. That's, that's our daddy. So Jay-Z, our husband, are speaking out. Matthew Knowles is speaking out in regards to how does an artist win the most Grammys and has never won Album of the Year. Let me also remind you this. There aren't a lot of black women that have won Album of the Year. I believe the last black woman to win Album of the Year, uh, thank you, Tammy, because I was think, was Lauryn Hill back in 1999. It, there's there's a lot. There's a lot. But then, of course, I see this Candy. We'll talk more about Candy in a second. But Candy talks about a secret, secret group of Grammy selectors that she was a part of one year. One year, I was actually on the board with the people who actually got to vote, vote. Basically, everybody votes. Mm -hmm. And then they narrow it down. And then they have a secret group of people who votes on the top five. Here's the thing. All the people that is in the Grammy Association, obviously, is way more others than it is black people. But if you don't know these names, it's a popularity contest. And you're just going through voting based off of the names you recognize. So you're going to narrow it down to five people. When it gets the five people that the secret committee get to choose from is the ones that the masses get narrowed it down to. I'm just holding on a name. I don't know who that is. You get what I'm saying? So my question is somebody saying you have to pay dues, and if you haven't paid your dues, you aren't considered to be a nominee. Is that true? Yeah, that may be true. I'm uh, so I don't know if Candy realized she was telling on, on the industry. Again... Which makes me, because I'm sure Jay-Z and Beyonce know this as well. You, you, they're not new to the industry. I just feel like putting that much value on a system that you know that wasn't created for you, that does not support you, I, I, I wouldn't care. But that's me. That's me. But you could tell in the audience that Beyonce felt proud in that moment. She felt proud that her man was defending her. But I guess also as an artist, you have an ego and you feel like you've put together a collection of work that deserves it. And that's the one that she hasn't gotten. Some people might say she has, she doesn't deserve it. I don't know if I would say that. Well, speaking of which, speaking of Drake, hey Drake, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> if you know, you know. Uh, so Drake posted this on his Instagram during the Grammys saying, uh, first of all, they, it was a quote from what he what he said in a previous Grammys. He says, you already won if you make if you have people who are singing your songs word for word. If you're a hero, if you're a hero in your own town, in your own hometown. All right. He reposted this and says, all you incredible artists, remember, this show isn't isn't the facts. It is just the opinion of a group of people whose names are kept uh, kept a secret. Literally, you can Google it. Congrats to anybody winning anything for hip hop. But this show, this show doesn't dictate ish in our world. Okay, Drake. This is, again, if Drake is saying this, Jay-Z and Beyonce, of all people you would think, would be agreeing with that. But I guess he felt 
I'm, if I'm going to accept this award, I'm going to use this moment to uplift my wife. I can't be mad at that. I can't be mad at that. I don't, I don't think that he told any lies, but I just, I just feel like y'all are above this. <laughs> Look, y'all are above this. Speaking of the Grammys, uh, the Grammys, uh, woo, 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 they did something so wrong. They posted on their social media that um, Nicki Minaj and Ice Spice had won when really it was Killer Mike. That Not Killer Mike. Look. Okay. So a lot of people feel as if Nicki Minaj has been uh, snubbed by the Grammys. She has yet to win a Grammy. Uh, but she was nominated this year. And look, people have called out the Grammys, including Nicki Minaj, over the years for their process. All right. But a lot of people feel as if Nicki Minaj uh, was snubbed this year and they feel like they're playing in Nicki's face. The, the barbs, you know, the barbs, the barbs are feeling as if the industry is playing in Nicki's face by making that mistake on social media announcing that she had won when she didn't win. And it was Killer Mike that won. And then people are now speculating, did the Barb's call the police on Killer Mike? Come on. No, 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 no. Come on. So Killer Mike was, a, he won three Grammys that night. On Sunday night, Killer Mike won three Grammys. Only for Killer Mike to be taken out in handcuffs. Only to be taken out in handcuffs. He wants, so he was having the best night of his life. And there's video footage of him being taken out. Being taken out. Well, this is why. Because a lot of people are wondering, why was he arrested? Was it the barbs? Did the barbs call, call the police on Killer Mike? Did he have warrants? I don't know if he had, no, he did not have warrants. Apparently, he had like some sort of physical altercation with someone. All right. All right, let me just read to you quickly, because a lot of people have been asking, did you hear what happened to Killer Mike? And I know the name doesn't help, but okay. So Killer Mike says an overzealous security guard, a barb, <laughs> look, look, a barb, let me find out. I mean, there are people that you don't realize that are barbs that are barbs. There are, there are some undercover barbs. <laughs> so Killer Mike says an overzealous security guard contributed to the physical altercation that led to his arrest after the rapper and activist won three awards at the Grammys. So in a statement on Tuesday, this is breaking news. As you can imagine, there was a lot going on and there was some confusion around which door my team and I should enter. We experienced an overzealous security guard, but my team and I have the utmost confidence that I will ultimately be cleared of all wrongdoing. On Sunday, Mike was escorted in handcuffs by Los Angeles police at Crypto.com Arena after joyous moments for him at the Grammys premiere ceremony, where he won awards in in quick succession. He has he had won his first Grammy in he hasn't won his first wait he had won his first Grammy in more than two decades. Police said, um, said that Mike was detained after the altercation and booked on a misdemeanor. The rapper's real name is Michael Michael Render was was released Sunday evening on his own recognizance. He's scheduled to appear in a court on February 29th, not on the last day of Black History Month in L.A. In his, in his statement, Mike thanked the Grammys for recognizing his work. He also noted that he and his wife are elated after finding out Monday that their son, who was a, on a list for a, kid, for a kidney for years, for the last three years, found a match. So that's some good news. That's some good news. I believe that the Grammys will make this, make this right. I believe that the Grammys will make this right. I believe that they will solve this. I don't think he will face any charges. I think he will, he will have a clear record. All right? I I hope. <laughs> look, 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 I hope. I mean, that's sad. You're having like the best moment of of your of your your career. You, you just won 3 Grammys and now you're being escorted out by unnecessary. Unnecessary. Courtney says Mike Killer Mike is the rapper's rapper. So the Barbs are really upset that the Grammys made that mistake in regards to announcing Nikki as the winner when she wasn't the winner and it was actually Killer Mike. 
As you know, last week we were talking about the beef between Megan Thee Stallion and um, Nicki Minaj. It really felt like a beef between just Nicki Minaj because Megan never said anything after she dropped her song. Congratulations to Megan Thee Stallion. She has the number one song in the country. It's her first number one as a solo artist. As you know, her other number one was with um, with um, Nicki Minaj, Hot Girl Summer. Just saying. Didn't she also have a number one with Cardi as well? But this is her first solo because of her song Hiss. And look, Nikki, you helped. You helped. You unintentionally helped. Or no, maybe intent. Well, no, unintentionally helped drive this up because you talked about it for 500 days straight. And then you released the diss track. That only helped elevate the song because a lot of people went to go listen to the song like, what did she say? I have to say, listening back to his, it's pretty damn clever. If you go break down those lyrics that she did, and look, there's only one particular line about Nikki. Everything else is about Tory Lanez. It's about social media. It's about her exes. I oh yeah, WAP WAP. Thank you guys, producers in the live chat. So yeah, she. So this is technically her third number one um, on the Hot 100, but her first solo. All right. <sighs> so Nicole says that that was number one. Hot Girl Summer suck. I okay, we won't get we won't get into it. <laughs> Look. Oh, thank you, Crystal. I I know it was another one collaboration. It was it was with Beyonce. It was with Beyonce. It was Beyonce. It was her song with Beyonce Savage, the, the remix that went to number one. Look, I can't remember everything, y'all. Look, it's Tuesday Takeover. We have a lot to cover. All right. But his is very clever. Go listen to the lyrics. So just a correction. This is her first solo number one hit. Her previous number one hits with Cardi and Beyonce went to number one. I want to just correct that. Chunky says uh, Nikki should have waited a week. No, I, she was in her feelings. Look, it is what it is. <laughs> Look, it is what it is. Congratulations to Megan. She's gotten that. She's announced her new album is coming. She announced that she has a tour coming up. She also announced that she's partnered with a major record label to release her, her next project independently. And she owns her masters, the masters that Nikki threatened to buy from Carl, from her original label. <laughs> Serenity says, I will watch Drake D video after work. If it's still there, if it's still there, Serenity, <laughs> don't hit me up for it. I saw it, though. Allegedly, we don't know if it was Drake. All right. Moving on, moving on, guys, you're just joining us. This is our Tuesday Takeover, where we cover a variety of reality TV, reality TV news, and pop culture news. We just announced, we just announced that we will be coming. We're bringing the Kempire After Dark Tour to Philly, March 7th. Tickets will go on sale this Friday, this Friday. So if you are in the New York, Tri-State area, Philly area, near Philly, DMV, and you can't make it to our February 16th show, which is sold out, Get your tickets this Friday. Let's set some records. Let's set some records. And next week, we will be announcing significant more tour dates for the Kempire After Dark Tour. This is our official time to meet, y'all. Meet and talk that talk. All right? All right. Moving on. Moving on. Did I talk about everything I want to talk about in regards to the Grammys? And let me look at my notes. I think I did. I think I did. Well, this is the perfect transition for us to talk about Candy Burris. So Candy Burris made the announcement at on the red carpet at the Grammys that she would be taking a break from the Real Housewives of Atlanta after 14 seasons. So some of you said, thank God. You know what? I really I need y'all to stop downplaying what Candy has brought over the years. Has she brought a lot in recent years? Maybe not. However, we can't forget, remember one of our favorite shows to recap? I think Candy's a good, what's the word? She's a good supporting character in, in these shows. Because remember, we loved recapping SWV and the Escape Reality Show. Oh, that was such a time. Especially when, when RHOA wasn't really that interesting. Oh, it was so great having that show on. So Candy... Broke it down. She spoke to Variety. She spoke to Entertainment Tonight. Then she spoke to our friend over at, at Pride.com, Ricky Cornish, about she was offered to come back. According to Candy, she was offered to come back. I'm not sure if that offer just wasn't lucrative enough for her. As you know, Candy is the highest paid housewife, I believe, across the entire franchise. 
All right. I'm I'm hearing two plus million. As you also know, our friends over at lovebscott.com were the first to report that a Real Housewives of Atlanta reboot was coming. And since then, we've heard from Andy Cohen. We've heard from Sheree. We've heard from Candy. Now we're hearing from Kenya Moore. So Candy confirmed that she's going to take a break. She says that Bravo took too long in regards to um, letting her know, when are we going to start this season? So according to Candy, she has a lot of really great opportunities, a lot of big news coming. And for Candy to walk away from, because even if they didn't, let's say, let's for argument's sake, they did not offer Candy the full $2 million again. Candy walked away from at least a million dollars. All right? She had to. She had to. So I, which I feel as if, according to sources, opened up opportunities for other people to return this season. Well, by now, you may have seen our friends over at the Neighborhood Talk are reporting that Portia Peach Juice Williams, Gobadia, who has me blocked on social media, which is fine, which is fine. It's okay, Portia. I'm still going to find out information, okay? Word on the street, according to them, and their exclusive last night, Portia Peach Juice Williams, Gobadia, <laughs> will be returning, basically signed it signed on not signed on dotted line according to my sources so of course once i got that information you know i had to reach out to some people so you've been hearing rumors that porsche was coming back porsche's coming back porsche's coming back okay apparently porsche has been in talks for a minute now all right and now and now it's being confirmed by the neighborhood talk that porsche is basically coming back I'm hearing it's almost 99% definite. No confirmation on Kenya, but the Neighborhood Talk is reporting that Kenya will also be returning. Kenya was on The Breakfast Club today and revealed a few things. A couple of things I want to mention, all right? <laughs> Jasmine says, Kemper got a burner account. Kempi Reality Vontiza, that's not much of a burner account. Um, so Kenya revealed that First of all, um, Candy told her first, well, not first, but she knew, she knew that Candy was not going to return because Candy told her. I'm hearing from sources that Bravo had no idea that Candy was going to even make this announcement on the red carpet at the Grammys. They had no idea. So they were a little blindsided, for lack of a better word, they were blindsided by her announcement. They knew of course, that she was not going to come back, but they didn't know that she was going to announce it when she did. All right. So Andy Cohen on his radio show had some really beautiful things to say about Candy. And I, I'm glad that he said what he said and he went and he took his time with it and, and talked about why Candy was so important to the Real Housewives franchise and to Atlanta in general. So let's take a listen to what Andy had to say on his radio. Announced radio last Andy. night on the Grammy red carpet that she's not going to be returning to the Real Housewives of Atlanta yeah. after an unbelievable run. Unbelievable. How many seasons was Candy on that It show? was 14, babe. 14. Holy crap. Yes. Incredible run. And you think about how much she not only went through on the show, but brought to the show. When she came on, she was with um, AJ. Mm -hmm. He, but between filming her first season and shooting the reunion, was killed. Wow. She lost him. Mama Joyce was disapproving of AJ in her first season. This was season two of Atlanta. It was Sandy's. It can Sandy. It was Candy's first season. She also, in those early seasons, did the music and wrote "Tardy for the Party," Insane. which has become, you know, canon. I mean, it, it's just it's just iconic to the to the moment. Uh, she fell in love with Todd. He was working for truly original right. yeah. uh, when they were on their trip in Africa. She brought us Mama Joyce. She brought us Bolo. She brought us 
the dungeon, <laughs> bedroom candy, Don Juan, the old lady gang. I mean, it goes on and on. She was always very true to herself. She always, um, she wanted to be the best. What she she has been one of my favorite people to work with in my whole time. First as an exec at Bravo and then as an EP of the Housewives and um, just, you know, hosting Watch What Happens Live. I love how competitive she is. Yeah. I love how thoughtful and smart she is. She is so strategic. She would call me um, anytime she had a thought about either the way was the way the show was being marketed or not marketed uh, mm -hmm. or about the way that it was being scheduled or she had a lot of really smart opinions and uh, and thoughts and and she always wanted to she was always wanted to know more well, what's your strategy here what are you thinking? was always a great dialogue. And then sometimes at the end of the conversation, she would say, you know what? I'm glad I called. I totally get it now. Sometimes she would say, y'all are wrong. Uh, and, I'll, and, you know, and a lot of times, by the way, she was right. So, um, you know, there's that. She always brought her authentic self to whatever she was doing. Uh, and... I'm excited also because she just she came into the show with her own um obviously her own name and her career. I mean, she's got a huge thing. Yeah, Candy was a talented is a talented star. She's not, you know, no offense to anyone else. She's not just a rich wife of someone. No, she's a, a Grammy winning she's songwriter and performer. Artist. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's incredible. Yeah. What she, the cachet that she brought. And one of the reasons I love having her on the radio when she comes through town or anything. I mean, she wrote Bills, 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 No Scrubs. Uh, on and the list goes on and on. She worked with Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey. She's in Mariah Carey's uh, autobiography. I mean, she's got a long history as a songwriter and performer. And now, you know, as a producer of Broadway shows, an actress. Um, so Andy coded nights. Who could forget that? Exactly. We want to anyway. <laughs> she really, I know that she's going to continue being a success in everything she does uh she's we had a we had a long talk the other day uh she and i and todd on the phone i appreciate her saying you know what i think this is just time uh and i the, she knows the show is at a crossroads right now mm -hmm. and i don't even want to talk about where we're going with it Maybe yeah. tomorrow I'll talk a little bit more about that, but I don't think this is about where we're going. I think it's just about celebrating her right now. And uh, I've said this before, uh, I think on the radio and anywhere where else, um, she, during the summer of 2020, which was a reckoning for all of us on many levels, she wrote such a thoughtful letter to all of us at Bravo and truly original. Y'all remember that letter? That letter that, that Nini complained about? She's like, well, we, we all should have been included. Just wanted to give you that context. Back to this. With some really valid and true thoughts about the way that we could be conducting business differently that might be just more inclusive, more positive, uh, more meaningful. And it led to a great conversation between she and the network. And I believe the network then, you know, took it seriously enough that they basically made them all action items and said, well, this is, we need to do all of this now. And um, I just, that's a partner. That's someone who's like, we are in this together. We have a long history. You guys, this is this is what I'm seeing that's going on. This is how it could be better. And 
So I just, if I didn't respect her and love her before that, man, did I after that. I thought, wow, this wow. is this is very cool. This is this is very impactful. Um, she impacted not only the show, but she impacted the way that we do business behind the scenes. And wow. that is powerful. Um, yeah. So I just, uh, I think both of us were, were, were kind of crying a little bit at the end of the call. Uh, the other He's day, a crier. And so are you. I know. I am too. I just, I kind of worked myself up into a lather as we were talking and, <laughs> and, uh, you know, but man, and I told her, look, and we're going to, I know that Bravo will be in business with her for a long time. They've got other things in development. She's did, you know, so she, they're there. She is a talent that they're not going to want to let go. You know, might I mention that the movie that Todd directed, it did really well on Peacock. They wound up buying the movie. You can see that on Peacock. Um, and so there you go. She's she is uh, she is one of the greats. She is one of the greats. And uh, I want everybody to know it. So. Thank you, Candy, for your service. I did tell her. I was like, you know, Candy, you could drop back in in a year or two. Right. You know? Right. Come back. It's like, it's like, absolutely. So there you go. Absolutely. Um, I, I didn't know when she was going to share her news, so I was surprised last night. I was like, oh, my God, it's out. Uh, so... I'm That's a good place to do it, the Grammy red carpet. Yeah, it is. Mm. Her, it's, you know, yeah, she's worldwide. By the way, Todd Tucker's movie is called The Pass, and it's up on Peacock now. So, All more right. to come. All right. I think that was a lovely, because we've never seen Andy Cohen. We, If you follow any of the Housewives stuff over the years, you know that Andy Cohen truly does love him some candy Burris Tucker. All right? However, um, we have not seen him give a housewife this sort of homage when they've left the, the show. Um, he said some lovely things about Nene, but this was like an eight minute rant on how much he loves Candy. But if you've seen other interviews or if you've seen Candy on Radio Andy, he is a fan of Candy Burris Tucker. All right. Um, and based on what I'm hearing, Candy is a real one. She's a real one because and she she's very generous. I'm I'm just gonna leave it at that. Maybe during Campfire After Dark, I'll share more. But whatever she has coming, because she she announces on the red carpet that she has big news coming. Whatever she has coming, please understand. Please understand. For her to turn away, again, she said that she was offered to come back. For her to turn away from at least a million dollars, at least, at least, it might be more, might be more, almost for sure, more means that whatever she has coming is big, okay? Um, but she hasn't burned a bridge. She hasn't burned a bridge, and good for her. So the, the announcement last night from the Neighborhood Talk is that Portia Williams is coming back along with Kenya Moore. And I don't know. I think a lot of people do not want to see Kenya Moore and, uh, and um, Portia fighting over something that happened how many seasons ago? I don't think any any of us want to see that. I need us to focus on moving forward. And what I'm hearing is we're going to get a, a bunch of newbies. We're going to get a bunch of newbies along with this. And for those that are wondering, okay, I'm not going to say it. I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I don't, I've already said too much. I've already said too much. But congrats to, to Candy for whatever she has coming up that she's about to announce. I'm looking forward to it. Um, congrats to, to, to Portia. I mean, I'm okay with Portia coming back. If Portia didn't come back, I'd be like, hmm. But I will say this, and I said this when I saw the news last night. Is she about to leave Simon Gobadia? She seems very happy, very happy with her, her Simon Gobadia. But I'm like, is this a setup for her, you know, getting her own coin and, and leaving the man? I don't know. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. We shall see. I'm just not looking forward to seeing Simon on RHOA, but it's better than have her, Portia having her own show and us seeing him full time. We see him every once in a while. That's fine. I don't mind seeing Portia. I think Portia is a lot of fun to watch. Okay. So Portia, I, 
Portia pretty much is coming. I'm hearing that she hasn't signed on dotted line just yet, allegedly. However, it's almost there. It's almost there. All right. All right. Um, so, and of course, congratulations to Kenya. I do want to mention Kenya was on The Breakfast Club. She's promoting her new Lifetime movie. Shout out to Lifetime for creating these stories about black women and black girls missing. This is their next story that Kenya's out here promoting, and she's starring in this movie. And when she dropped by The Breakfast Club, she revealed some interesting information, a couple of interesting things. First off, she revealed that her divorce with Mark isn't necessarily 100% done yet. You know, the judge has to sign off on it. She's still waiting on that. She also revealed that Mark Daly is engaged. What? What's up with these men getting engaged before they're actually divorced? We know that these two have been taking a very long time to get a divorce, okay? But apparently, Mark Daly's engaged to someone else. Okay. Also, allegedly, according to Kenya, Mark Daly has not seen his beautiful, intelligent, cutie patootie daughter, Brooklyn, in almost a year. She said it was last March that he saw his daughter. And she's here in New York. He has an opportunity to see Brooklyn and he has not taken that that opportunity. Okay. All right. I don't understand why you wouldn't see. Anyways. So she revealed that. So as I said to you before, um, Kenya's on the promo trail. She's on the promo trail. And she said this about Phaedra on Traders. And she spoke what we thought. If you were on the show, would you have clocked Phaedra to be a traitor? <laughs> Are you serious? She would have been the first one I would have Hold said. On. If you were on the show, would you have clocked Phaedra to be a traitor? <laughs> Are you serious? She would have been the first one I would have said. You know I know who she is. <laughs> I would have told you guys from the beginning, it's definitely Phaedra. <laughs> I would bet my life on it because she, you know, that's how she lived her life. Like, uh, <laughs> she lived her life as a traitor. My mom texted me the other day. She's like, that really sweet girl, Phaedra, I, I, you know, I can't believe she murdered you. And I'm like, I can. I think she's doing an amazing job. I, I just wish she would always lean into the villain that she really is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we all have said this already, but Kenya said it. Okay. So we're, we are definitely um, very excited <laughs> with, with Phaedra, which is a perfect segue for us to get into our recap of the traitors. <laughs> the traitors. All right. So before we get into that, let me say thank you because we had quite a few super chats. Uh, Joe, thank you so much for the uh, super chat. Joe says, do we love Miley's speech as much as her hair? <laughs> so shady. <laughs> let me show you a picture of Miley's hair. Oh, so shady. Where is uh, my, my Miley picture? Here it is. Oh, uh, I mean, she was she was going for a moment. OK, she was giving you a moment. Miley looked beautiful. Congratulations, Miley, on your uh, first Grammy ever. Julie, thank you so much for the super chat. Julie says, wanted to say thank you for all, wait, wait, for all, for all you do for us. Thank you, Julie. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for always supporting our Tuesday Takeover. Joe, thank you so much for another super chat. Joe says, these award shows like, like Grammys, Emmys, Oscars, Tonys, the selection committees just need to have a standardized and transparent set of rubric, um, but by which to select the winners on. They, they're not going to do that because they do this intentionally for a reason. So be, people can buy their spots. They're, they're making money, allegedly, off of this. Chocolate Soul, thank you so much for the Super Chat. Chocolate Soul says, Candy's RHOA story has been fully realized. We have seen Riley grow up, loss of a fiancé, Mama Joyce, the aunties, wedding, wedding, businesses, two children, etc. Nothing left except divorce. God forbid. Damn. Well, no. There's still more, more to be told. I mean, maybe it doesn't need to happen on reality television, but... Doesn't mean her life is over. I know. I know. Andy's um, conversation on radio. Andy sounded like a eulogy, but no, no. <laughs> Julie, thank you so much for another super chat. She says, "I called into Andy's show, and he said why he had a long conversation uh, with Candy. He loves her and said that they're working on other projects with her." Thank you so much, Julie. Rita, thank you so much for the super chat. G greetings from Bonn, Germany. I don't, have I been to Bonn? I don't think so. I haven't been to Bonn. I need to go back to Germany, too. Rita, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you. La Heathers, thank you so much for the super chat. Um, La Heathers says, announcing your departure from uh, a Housewives TV show at the Grammys red carpet is a great way to go out. 
I mean, don't lie. And Andy literally says that Candy in his in his eulogy um, says that she's very strategic. She knew that she was going to make that announcement then and then on, and on the red carpet. She knew. Like, we don't do stuff. Look, as Tauruses, we don't just do stuff to do stuff. Okay? We plotting and planning. All right? Anyways. So, congratulations to everyone at the Grammys. Congratulations to Candy on this next adventure. I cannot wait to figure out what exactly she has planned. But, Candy, would you do Traders? You're competitive. I mean, she's going to probably be too busy anyway to do Traders Season 3. But, I'm loving Season 2. Right? Anyone else? I hate the fact that this comes on Thursdays and, and I have to wait so long to talk to you guys about this because it feels so old, but I literally just rewatched it. I rewatched it before our Tuesday takeover. Okay, where do I begin? Dan, you idiot. We knew that I was hoping that Dan did not make that mistake. I was hoping that last week's episode was just him sort of putting it out there. Maybe he'll go after Bergie. No, this fool really went after Bergie because he felt so threatened by Bergie, not realizing, even though poverty gave you a heads up, he, uh, Peter came to me, he went to you, we don't know who else he went to, and is dropping these little things. We should pick someone that was in the house. But this idiot, sorry, uh, Dan, I don't mean to call you an idiot, but you're an idiot. Um, but at the same time, I'm glad you're gone. Because the way you came at Phaedra, I was like, what are you doing? And I get it. It's traitors. It's, it's that type of game. It's every trader for, for themselves. So, but I was impressed. I was impressed with how he pieced together his speech at the end. I was impressed. All right. So Peter had that plan last week. Remember his plan? He only told three people, CT, Poverty, and Dan, that he and, um, what's her face? Damn, Janelle got the, um, the shield. Janelle was voted out during during the thing. All right, so she she was gone. But Dan has been too quiet during this game, and a lot of people said you're too quiet. We need to know what you're thinking. We need to know, you know, who do you think is a traitor? You've been too quiet. You're moving like a traitor. So during Janelle's, um, you know, b bootation, look, bootation. I don't know what to call it. Um, <laughs> dismissal. Um, during that, that's when. He was like, oh, I think I think Janelle is a traitor. Only for us to find out that she's not one. So at the end of last week's episode, Dan is like, I'm going for Bergie because Bergie's like, oh, I think you're a traitor. You're on my list. So why would you specifically go after someone that has called you out? Has called you out. Like it's so that is so obvious. But you you were so your ego was so big that you didn't think that Peter, oh, a bachelor. You do realize the bachelors aren't just some pretty boys or models that are brought onto the show. A lot of them have careers. They're the, they're the bachelor because they're supposed to be like, you know, good looking, have great careers, have money. So he's not some some idiot. All right. Um, <laughs> so I don't obviously he doesn't watch the show. I don't even watch the show, but I, I know that much. So I would never look at Peter as, oh, he's just some some dumb bachelor. no. Shout out to the models. I'm sorry, the models, the models, the models, the models got it. They called it stray. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. But you get what I'm saying. So he really, he took that for granted. He took that for granted and did not believe that Peter was that smart. But Peter showed them something. But the heat is still on poverty because, and now the heat is even more on poverty because she was one of the people that Peter told about, about having the shield. Only for the shield to be blocked. The shield was blocked. <laughs> Idiot. I'm sorry. I'm so mad at him for being so stupid. Anyway, so during this episode, Sheree won something. Sheree finally won something in her life. She won the shield this week, but she didn't even need it because no one cares about Sheree. Okay. Nobody cares about Sheree. Anyways. So, um, Sheree won. I actually hate this particular competition. If you watch um, other seasons of The Traders, when they have to lift things and carry it to a, another location, like, oh, I, that's the part I would be like, I give up. I can't do it. I can't do it. So they're competing. Why did Trishel almost drown Kevin in order to get a shield? 
a shield box. She's like, I see a shield. I, I really need a shield. And Kevin's like, I need a shield too. And she almost drowned the poor boy because she's just like, I need to get a shield. <laughs> she needs a shield though. She definitely needed one. So Sheree finally wins something. <laughs> wins something on the game. Um, and she finally gets something based off of this, this whole competition. Sidebar, Kate, Kate is so like, she could have gotten a shield or been a contestant for it. She was just like, I don't want it. She drops it. She's like, I don't want it. I don't want it. I love Kate being a part of the season. Can Kate host the reunions? I think she would, and maybe not this reunion because she's a part of the cast, but next year. I like her being a part of the Traders family. I like the fact that she's back. I wonder if people suspect her as a traitor. They did last season. I I mean, she's obviously a faithful. To me, she's the comic relief in the episodes. Her and Phaedra are the comic relief. So they had that competition. Sheree wins. All right. But now, now they have to figure out who's the traitor. And Dan is, is the prime suspect for a lot of people. But even the faithfuls are, aren't trusting each other. There's like a group of faithfuls. There's a group of faithfuls that are like only trust each other. And then there's other group of faithfuls that are just sort of like out on the outside. All right. So they all believe that it's Dan and they believe that it's poverty. So poverty and Dan are the biggest suspects. So once they get to the round table, Dan is like, I've been watching this one particular person since the beginning. And the way Dan lays it out, I was like, Honestly, I feel like he did a fantastic job laying it out, but he underestimated his opponent once again because he hasn't seen this side of Phaedra. He's not familiar with Phaedra. He's probably just like, oh, she's just some housewife. No, 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 no. She's a perfect trader. She's an attorney. I mean, she hasn't won a case in a long time until this time. She won a case finally. <laughs> look, she looked like oh, the housewives were winning this episode. So Phaedra finally won a case. And he, he, he lays out all of the reasons why this particular person wasn't a suspect and should be a suspect. And honestly, he did, I think he did a really great job in doing that. Only for, for Phaedra to come back. She's like, I only do too much because you do too little. <laughs> yeah, this is, the, this is the way Phaedra should have come on to our TV screens. Not Ultimate Girls Trip, not Married to Medicine, sidebar. I know some of you thinking, oh, well, now maybe Phaedra can come back to Real Housewives of Atlanta. I'm hearing no. I'm hearing she, she's going to return to Married to Medicine. All right? And probably traitors if she doesn't win this season. All right. So Ph Phaedra, she's like, I only do too much because you do too little. Ooh. <laughs> I only do too much because you do too little. That's what that's what Phaedra said to him. She read him down and she did it. She did it with like this, with her pursed lips and everything. Not at her hair didn't move at all. And everyone was just like, oh. And by the end of the read that she gave him, because she she listed all the reads. She's like, I didn't know about about um Bur Burgalicious. I love Burgalicious. Why would I get rid of Burgalicious? Okay. The way that she broke it down, Dan was not ready. He underestimated his opponent yet again in this episode. And at the same time, I don't know. I think part of it was intentional because he exposed a traitor. And Trishel, at the end of that, she was like, I think he, I think Phaedra's a, a, a traitor. And I think they turned on each other and he exposed the traitor because he, he had narrowed it down to poverty and Phaedra. He literally exposed them both. And initially when I saw this, I was like, why wouldn't you just go after poverty? No, he was going after Phaedra intentionally because the, there was already heat on poverty. So basically he just, he exposed all the traitors. But again, it's, it's, a, it's a traitor move. I, I hate the fact that he messed up Phaedra's game by doing that. But he's like, if I'm not going to win the money, neither are you. MC. If I'm not going to win the money, neither are you. So Phaedra's got to really figure this out. So because they are down one trader, 
Sidebar, Alan Cummings. I have to say this every time we recap traders. You are superb. <laughs> you are superb. I love Alan Cummings as the host of this show. Superb. The outfits, the outfits are outfitting. Um, I cannot forget to say that every time we recap it. So he lets them know you have to pick a trader. So they were considering getting rid of Peter because he he's on to them. But this is actually the perfect time to add a new trader. And they ask Peter to be the trader. Because now if he takes it, he will get the scent off of him and, and the other traders. But that's going to be a hard task. We don't know in this episode, episode six, whether or not he takes it. But it's a smart move on poverty's end. It's a smart move on poverty's end. Do you think that Dan, uh, not Dan, that Peter will take it? I need to um, ask you guys in the live chat. Uh, let me see. Let me end that poll. I'm going to ask you guys. And for those that are listening to this, don't forget, guys, you can listen and take us on the go by downloading the Kempire podcast on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. While you're there, don't forget to give us a five-star rating. But as I said before, you can take our live show and special episodes on the podcast on the go when you do that. Let me just ask you a question. All right? Not a question. Let me do a poll. Let me do a quick poll. Okay. Uh, do you think... Um, do you think that Peter will take the trader um, request? Yes, no. I'm going to add maybe. Okay. Live chat for those that are watching on YouTube. Let me know. And replay crew, be sure to let me know. We will be posting the timestamps for you guys so you can go to the stories that you want to, to listen to. But I think it's good to listen to the entire Tuesday takeover. I think I'm entertaining from beginning to end. Cocky? Well, I have a Leo moon. <laughs> I have a Leo moon. All right. Speaking of being cocky, uh, we have our Kempire After Dark tour coming to Philly. Philly. We will be making tickets available this Friday at City Winery in Philadelphia. First time coming. I am excited to meet all of you. If you will be in the area or nearby, Go get your tickets coming this Friday. City Winery, I will be in Philadelphia March 7th, March 7th. So be sure to check that out. And next week, we will be announcing significant more additional tour dates. Okay, more additional tour dates will be coming. So stay tuned for that. All right. Um, also, don't forget today's show is sponsored, sponsored by our friends over at Rose Forever. Rose Forever. Um, Cyber. I think we should pick a, a, a winner for some Rose Forever. So, you know, Rose Forever has roses that last up to a year. They smell great. They look great. You see the roses behind me if you are watching me on YouTube. I love Rose Forever. You can get some roses for yourself with the discount code KEMPIRE40 for $40 off. Plus, you can use the discount code INFLUENCER for free worldwide shipping. Free worldwide shipping. Should we pick a, a winner in the live chat? For those that are watching, I told you you have to be here. You never know when we're going to pick a winner. And you, you never know where we're going to pick up. IB, we're working on a date. Stay tuned. Next week, we'll be announcing more dates. So stay tuned. All right, St. Louis, St. Louis. You want me to come to St. Louis? Who wants me to come to St. Louis? <laughs> Let me know. Let's, let's choose a winner for um, some Rose Forever. I love doing giveaways with you guys. Come on now. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. But like I said, even if you don't win, even if you don't win, you can still get affordable roses for yourself at roseforever.com, and you can get $40 off with Kempire40 plus free worldwide shipping with a discount code INFLUENCER. More information will be available in the description of the video or episode if you're listening to this. Let's pick a winner, all right? Let's pick a winner. Let's pick a winner. All right. <clears throat> okay, let's roll it. Congratulations to Boogie Down Gal, who's a channel member, too. Thank you so much. Yes. Boogie Down Gal. Hold on. Let me put it up here. Congratulations, Boogie Down Gal. I'm assuming you're in the New York area. But guys, I do, I do this through a system. So I don't choose the winner. The system chooses the winner. All right. Congratulations to Boogie Down Gal. 
Um, you are the winner. Please email us at kempiredaily at gmail.com. No one else email us. Some of y'all tried that before. <laughs> Only Boogie Down Gal should email us. Boogie Down Gal, just let us know that you're in the chat uh, so that we can uh, confirm that you've heard this and we've made this announcement. So congratulations, congratulations to Boogie Down Gal on winning some rose forever. Roses that will last up to a year. So you'll think of me every time you look at it. Or maybe you want to give it away as a gift. Maybe. It's up to you. Congratulations to Boogie Down Gal. Boogie Down Gal. All right. But like I said before, guys, just because you didn't win doesn't mean that you can't get some roses for yourself. As I said to you before, it's affordable. You can get $40 off with Kempire 40 and free worldwide shipping with the discount code influencer. All right. Congratulations, Boogie Down Girl. I see you. Oh, oh, oh you're from New York, but you live in Charlotte. Stay tuned. Hopefully we'll be coming to Charlotte, North Carolina too. Everyone has left New York. It's okay. <laughs> Boogie Down Girl, please email us uh, and we will get those roses to you as soon as poppy. Happy Valentine's Day, but you don't just have to get roses for Valentine's Day. Or maybe you don't have a Valentine. Maybe you don't have a Valentine. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't have one either. Whoa, whoa, whoa to me. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Look, I don't care. But maybe you want to feel special for yourself. More information on Rose Forever will be available in the description. All right. All right. <laughs> Let me say thank you. We had a, a few super chats as well. Millie, thank you so much for the super chat. Millie says, if it wasn't for Kate, Phaedra would have tripped over her words. Love from Nairobi. Yes. Um, well, you got a good point, Millie. Good point. If you ever bring your live show to South Africa, I'm there. Well, you know I'm going to. You know I'm going to, but stay tuned. You know I'm definitely going to do it. Um, Joe, thank you, thank you, Joe, for all the super chats. Joe's just making it rain. Maybe I should shimmy. Let me shimmy. <laughs> we haven't shimmied in a while. Joe says, I, I liked Dan throwing Phaedra under the bus. Now the rest of the traders have mud on them. Trishel will probably share her thoughts with the faithful group and go for poverty and Phaedra next. God. Yeah, I I don't I feel like the Faithfuls are going to win this season, and I'm not happy about that. <laughs> Joe, thank you so much for another super chat. Joe says <clears throat> the trailer had had the, the Phaedra and Peter confrontation at the roundtable about her not kissing a bachelor's um, bootay. If that has not happened yet, yeah, it hasn't. I think Peter said no and continued to go after both women. Whew, I don't I look. If if Phaedra's able to get out of this, she really did what did what people think she did to Candy. No, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. No, if she's able to get out of this, that will be truly, 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 truly impressive. I don't know if she will be. Do you guys think that she will be? Okay. Um, based off the poll, based off the poll, I said, do you think Peter will take the trader request? Fifty eight percent of you said yes. Fifty eight percent of you said yes. Twenty two percent of you said maybe, maybe. Uh, Sherry says she misses the shimmy. If I remember, I will. Uh, honestly, I wouldn't mind if CT won. CT and Phaedra and their love affair, him, him helping her across that that river. I was like, look at this little love affair that's that's um happening between these two. All right, all right. Um, was there? Wait, there was another thing that I wanted to mention that I forgot to mention. I don't remember. Oh. Uh, King Charles. Can we talk about King Charles briefly? So the announcement came out that King Charles has cancer. All right. All right. Um, <clears throat> let me just read this to you guys. Hold on. So apparently the, the, the Guardian's reporting right now that um, the announcement it has set Buckingham Palace machinery into motion. So with King Charles' cancer diagnosis and uncertainty over when he will return to full public duty, the palace machinery, which is primed to deal with foreseeable event eventualities, will swing into action. President and protocol enshrined in statutes and dictated in regal letters patent over successive reigns have been designed to ensure a little um, as little disruption as possible to the performance of the core constitutional duties of the sovereign. So as the king begins treatment, the business of ruling will go on, albeit not in the way the, uh, the relatively new king would have wished. Mind you, remember I was in London during his coronation. And mind you, both his parents have lived to like 90 something years old. While he has been forced to rearrange and postpone his public-facing duties, other working royals are expected to pick up the slack. 
I heard that Prince Harry already has flown to the UK after this news. So the Guardian continues. They said Queen Elizabeth II once famously said, I have to be seen to be believed. A lifeblood of monarchy is, is, is its visibility. The local community visits as vital um, as the spectacular ceremony pageantry. With two senior royals out of action, Catherine, Prince, Princess of Wales, is recuperating from abdominal surgery and will not be resuming her duties until after Easter. The Prince of Wales, Queen Camilla, and the Prince Royal, um, Prince Royal, uh, seem likely to bear the brunt. Indeed, Princess Anne, who's 73 years old, who once remarked dryly that a slimmed down monarchy doesn't sound like a good idea from where I'm standing, found, found herself going to four engagements on Tuesday. Damn. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I mean, I, look, it's anticipated that William, who's 41 years old, you know, Prince William, uh, who returns to public duty this week, having taken time off while his wife was in the hospital, will undertake some of the duties on behalf of the king in addition to his own engagements. The announcements of his return to duties, which was made just a few hours before Buckingham Palace's statement about Charles's diagnosis, will um, uh, will aides will have uh, will will have hoped signify some stability within the royal family. I mean, look. They've already, you know, some people have, have always rumored and believed that Prince William, they were going to skip a King Charles and go straight to Prince William. Obviously, that that did not happen. Um, but we wish the best. We wish the best for 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 uh, King Charles and in this cancer diagnosis. But they have to prepare themselves because it's it's really a symbolic role for for the UK, his role. So him not being well and them making this announcement is interesting. So we're going to continue to follow this story. I wanted to mention it because as you know, Tuesday takeover is a mix of not just reality TV. And that's not all that we talk about here on the channel, but a mix of um, pop culture news as well. And there's nothing more pop culture than the Royal family. So wishing, wishing him the best during this journey. Thank you to everyone that was here for our Tuesday takeover. Thank you to our King's guards for holding us down. Thank you to our channel members, old and new. We appreciate you guys. And of course, thank you to our subscribers and those that are watching in the bushes. We appreciate you being here as well. <laughs> Some of you are hilarious in the chat. All right, we're going to move on. We're going to get out of here. I will see you all in the replay. Replay crew, be sure to let us know your thoughts on anything that we talked about today. I think I covered everything. Yeah. Did I cover everything? You know, like I can't cover everything. Sidebar. I did cover everything. J-Lo. Did you guys see J-Lo on Saturday Night Live? Well, J-Lo was on Saturday Night Live and as the performer. But so was Ayo. You know Ayo who won all the awards. We celebrated her here um, just a few weeks ago for the Emmys and for the Golden Globes. So apparently when she was like 20-something years old, and she made fun of it on Saturday Night Live, she said some things about J-Lo and J-Lo's singing voice. I mean, did she lie? <laughs> Look, she didn't lie, but they were both going to be on Saturday Night Live. And if you saw at the end, it was very awkward. It was very awkward. I wonder if, I'm assuming, if you're going to make a joke about it on Saturday Night Live, I'm sure you went to J-Lo and, and was apologetic or something, right? But maybe J-Lo wasn't trying to hear it. Maybe. So it was definitely a little awkward, but I don't think that she lied. I love me some Jennifer Lopez. I do. I do love Jennifer Lopez. Do I love Jennifer Lopez's voice? I mean, I like Jennifer Lopez's songs. I don't think she's the most or the strongest singer. She did a hell of a performance. She's 50 something years old. She danced her butt off on, on that Can't Get Enough song and brought out brought out Lotto and brought out Redman. She did a, she did a hell of a performance. I could have passed on that that ballad that she did though. J Lo, no. No. But she's very, she's very insecure, I hear, allegedly, about her vocals. Understandably, but J-Lo, you're still a huge, huge artist. You're a huge artist. You're a huge actress. You're A-list. You know what I mean? And you work your butt off. You earned that. that. Just saying, J-Lo, we love you. Woo, 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 J-Lo. I hope you were nice to, to Io and weren't mean. I mean, I know she was mean to you. I know she was mean to you. 
<laughs> oh my god i know she was mean to you but it's okay girl it's all right it's all right i thought it was a great i thought her first performance i uh, can't get enough was really good oh i forgot to talk about below deck all right let me just give you all the last few minutes we, we already been live for this long we will be posting the time stamps for those that are just joining us uh for our tuesday takeover um yes ib says jlo had red man on snl that to me was my favorite part was her bringing out red man because we haven't seen red man in such a long time all right i thought she did a great job i thought she did a great job i forgot to talk about below deck it's okay it's all right i don't have a lot to say about below Deck because it was the first episode we had our first charter we're meeting this new cast i don't i can't even remember everyone's name thank god i had this little um handout <laughs> in regards to the below deck cast we got captain carrie who we've seen on other iterations of below deck he's now replacing captain lee i mean there's no replacing captain lee we've got cat who doesn't seem like she can keep up zandy who's a witch barbara who comes from money <laughs> kyle who's very fresh and green ben who we already know and he's a player from the himalayas Frazier, who you who you know we love. We love Frazier. Frazier says that Anthony, the chef, Chef Anthony, who's French, wee oui, wee. Oui. He says that um he looks like my ex. <laughs> but Anthony's straight, based on what I can tell. And then we also have Sonny. Look, I love Below Deck. You know why I love Below Deck? Because you have to have a real skill set to even be on this yacht. This first episode, it was really just us getting our feet wet and getting to know all the personalities. Slowly but surely. I didn't think it was a dynamic first episode. It's a lot of new faces. It's a lot of new faces. I think there's only like really like three returning people here. Three returning people for season 11 of uh, Below Deck. Yeah, I think there's only three. It's Fraser, Captain Carey, and Ben. These are the only people that have been on Below Deck before. I Look, I, I like Captain Carey. He's nice, but he is no Captain Lee. <sighs> And Captain Lee, look, I get it. Captain Lee is taking some time. He had some health issues over the years. He says he's still part of the Bravo family, but he's no Captain Lee. Even Captain Sandy's not Captain Sandy anymore. But it was a it was a decent first episode. Was it a great first episode? No, we're, we're still getting to know people. Fraser is, you know, this is the second time being a chief stew, so he's he's learned some lessons from the past. All right. Oh wait, Shay says that um. Oh, yeah, Redman has been busy doing the TV One movies in the, the past few years and, and random concerts with Method Man every now and then. I have seen the, the random concerts. I didn't know he was doing acting now, but good for him. Good for him, Redman. But I like his voice. It's so distinct. Anyways, back to Below Deck. Again, guys, we will be posting the timestamps so you can jump around and, and go to the areas that you want to, to go to. And don't forget, you can also take us on the go by downloading the Kempire podcast on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. Help us get to 500 reviews there. So go give us a, a five-star review on those um, platforms. Deborah says, I, I don't really like Captain Carey. I don't. Here's the thing. He's beige. And I'm not talking about skin color. I'm just saying, like, personality. It's just sort of like, eh. He's not terrible, but he's not necessarily great. And I'm sure they will give him moments throughout the season to make it seem like he's going to be hard on the guys. Already the bosun. Hold on. Where's the bosun? Where's the bosun? How come I don't see the bosun? Does the bosun get fired? I don't see the bosun on this little um, cutout. Uh-oh. 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 Did they tell on themselves? Does the bosun get fired? Because based off this first episode, the bosun is trying to translate um, meters into feet, feet into meters. He doesn't really know what he's doing, but Ben was boasting on multiple other ships. I'm guessing the boatswain got fired. Damn, not us figuring it out for ourselves. He, he seems a little overwhelmed in this first episode. I don't think he's going to be able to keep up. Captain Carey's probably going to fire him. Damn, I'm sorry. Spoiler alert. <laughs> He's not on this little thing. And I'm not surprised based off this first premiere episode of Below Deck. Oh, sorry. Woo, woo, woo. Woo, woo. Hmm. Uh, we shall see. We shall see uh, what this cast will bring. I mean, I'm going to watch Below Deck. I'm a faithful Below Deck watcher. Um, They're in Grenada. 
Danny says, yeah, they're in Grenada, right? That's where they are. They're in Grenada this season. Where are they? Yeah, there was Grenada. Mm-hmm. We shall see. I'm not excited about Captain. Um, I'm sorry. I'm not really excited about Captain Kerry, but I'm going to give him a, ch a chance because, you know, I will give anyone a chance. If we can get, watch Portia's Family of Lies, we can give him a chance. <laughs> that says Kempire Investigations was on the case unintentionally, unintentionally. All right. Uh, Chocolate Chunk says, I immediately knew the bosun was getting fired. One look, one look told me all I needed to know. Wow. Look at you being um, the Oracle. All right. All right. So, again, the season premiere of the season 11 premiere of Below Deck happened last night. I did watch it. Great first episode. Okay, great. A good at first episode. A decent first episode. But, again, we are just learning to get to know everyone. I, they're already doing the, the struggles of who's fast, who's a quick learner. Oh, my God. Did you see the chef, Chef Anthony's? Um, apparently, the food that Chef does is fantastic, but he's messy as hell in the kitchen. He is messy as hell. Okay. <laughs> look, look, look. As soon as Fraser said that um he reminded him of his ex, I was like, ooh, maybe they're gonna hook up. But no, I think uh Captain and not Captain, Chef Anthony's straight. You know, French. Look, look, wee oui, wee. Oui. No, he's straight. That that never stopped Fraser though. Remember he during Fraser's earlier seasons, he hooked up with some straight boys. I'm just saying. <laughs> How you doing? Anyways. Guys, if you're part of the Replay crew, be sure to let us know where you're watching from. Let us know your thoughts on any of the topics that we've t discussed during our Tuesday Takeover. This is where we cover so much. So much. But we will be posting the timestamps a little bit later on. So stay tuned for that. Regardless, I think you should listen from, from beginning to end. All right? Or watch from beginning to end. All right? I will see you all in the comments. Don't forget to let me know what your good news of the day is. And this Friday, we will be officially... Um, making available the tickets for our city winery uh, performance at Phil in Philadelphia, March 7th. Tickets will go on sale this Friday. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you're following me on all the things so that you're the first to get tickets. DC, I will see you on February 16th. Literally, at this point, we're sold out. We're sold out. You can try. You can try and, 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 and claw your way in. But Kempire After Dark is coming to Washington, D.C., February 16th, just in time for Valentine's Day weekend. All right. So I will see you guys then. Thank you all for being here. I will see you guys later. If you haven't liked the video already, what are you doing? Over 1,100 of you are still here. 1,100 of you are still here. Can we get to 750 likes by the time this song ends? Let's do it. Bye, y'all.